Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are going to implement a swappable fragments, which lets you seamlessly navigate between different fragments by simply swapping to the third fragment or clicking on the tab that represents that fragment. Now to implement this, we need something similar to the fragment container view, which is responsible for showing and displaying the fragment, like we did in the previous videos. And that thing is called view pager. So here, if you open the tag within the main activity layout and type view pager, you can see here we have two types of view pager, one and two, so make sure to choose two. And for now, we're gonna make it match parent for the width and the height. And lastly, let's give it an ID. And this ID, for example, gonna be pager. Now, the view pager doesn't need any external libraries or any external dependencies. They are already included within any new Android Studio project. ViewPager 2 comes from the material dependency or the material library, which is already there within the build.grader file. So now let's start implementing the swipeable fragments. To implement the swipeable fragments, we need something called an adapter, which is a bridge between the UI and your fragments, and is used to manage and create the fragments according to the interaction with the view pager. So to do that, we're going to create a new class here within our project. This class is going to be called my fragment adapter, for example. And here the fragment adapter should extend from the fragment state adapter. And here we are going to add a constructor, which has a couple of overloads. So we're going to use the last one, which takes fragment manager and a lifecycle. And now to pass those parameters, we are going to first pass those to our class so the first thing is the fragment manager, so fragment manager, and here the lifecycle. Then pass those to the fragment state adapter constructor, fragment manager and the lifecycle. And here we have to implement the methods that come from the fragment state adapter. If you hover here on the class name and click on implement members, you can see we have to implement two methods. The first one is used to get the total number of items set by this adapter. So in this case, it gets the total number of fragments that you are showing to the user. And this one is used to create the fragment. So simply, this method manages the creation of fragments according to the position. So within our app here, this fragment has a position of 0, this one has a position of 1, and this one has a position of 2. And every time you swipe, this method is called and it creates that fragment for you. Now, the great thing about this method is that it will take care of the state of the fragment. And here it says, as long as the fragment is closer to the viewport, that means as long as the fragment is closer to the current fragment. So for example, the profile is closer to the home, just, just one fragment gap. That means the profile will still be there within the memory to not be destroyed. However, if you have multiple fragments within your view pager, then this fragment is going to be destroyed to free up some memory space. So now let's start implementing those methods. So the first thing, we don't know the number of fragments that we want to show to the user. We want to make this dynamic. We don't want to just return three items within this method. So instead of this, let's create a list of fragments that we want to show to the user. And instead of creating the list here within this class, I'm going to rather pass this list from outside of the fragment adapter. So here I'm going to create a new parameter called fragments and it's going to be a list of fragments. Now, in order to get access to the fragment within the get item count, we have to make this fragment val. And here we can have access to this fragment and then get the size of fragment. And lastly, let's return the size within the get item count function. Now, since we are using this fragment list within the fragment adapter class, then it's recommended to make it private so we prevent outside access to this variable. Now, the last thing is we need to create the fragment. So as you can see here, the create fragment function passes a position that represents the current position of the fragment within our list, and it returns a fragment. So we can simply just return fragment list or the fragments and pass the position. So since it knows the position of the fragment, we can pass that position to the fragment list and it will correctly return the fragment to be showed to the user. Now we're done with our adapter. Let's go back to the main activity. Here with our main activity, we are going to create an instance of the fragment adapter. So val 
adapter equal to my fragment adapter. And here we have to pass three things. The first one is the list of fragments. So I'm going to use the same fragments from the previous videos. Here I have fragment one, which is only have a text and it's similar to other fragments. All of them only have a simple text that represent the name of the fragment. So here I'm going to create a list of those fragments. So val fragments equal to list of and here we are going to create instances of our fragments. So the first one is called first fragment, then second fragment, and lastly, third fragment. And here, pass the fragment list, then pass the fragment manager. And we said we can get access to the fragment manager by using the support fragment manager. And lastly, we pass the life cycle. So since we are within an activity, we can simply get a life cycle by calling the life cycle property. And here we have our adapter ready. The last thing we need to do is to pass this adapter to the view pager. So since we have binding here, I'm gonna call binding dot pager dot adapter and assign that adapter to our adapter. And that's it. Let's run to see how this works. So here's our app. If you swipe now, it goes to the second fragment. Swipe again, it goes to the third fragment. Now how we can implement the tab layout that shows the tab of the fragments. To do that, we have to go to the main activity layout. And here we are going to add a tab layout. So add tab layout, make sure to choose here. This one for the width is going to match the parent and for the height is going to be wrap content. And now instead of adding the closing tag for the tab layout, Let's add the tag that opens this tab layout so we can add child layouts. And now to add tabs, we need to use the tab item tag. And here for the tags is gonna be wrap and wrap. And you can see here, we can also add a text to that tab. So for example, tab one, and you can see here within the design view, it shows tab one. You can also add more than one tab, tab two, for example, and lastly tab three but now those tabs are being static so we only assume that we have three tabs but what if we want to add those tabs dynamically according to the number of fragments so instead of this we are not going to add tabs within our xml file we're going to rather move this responsibility to our adapter and the view pager to library so instead of adding tabs let's just add the tab layout and here I'm gonna make the view pager top attached to the bottom of the tab layout. So let's do that here. The tab layout is going to match full parent for the width and for the height is gonna be zero DP. Now let's take the bottom of the pager, attach it to the bottom of the parent and the top of the pager, attach it to the bottom of the tab layout. And now for the tab layout, let's attach it to the start of the parent and the end to the end of the parent. And that's it here. This is the ID of the tab layout. Let's go to the main activity and start attaching the tab layout with the view pager. So to do this, we're gonna call the tab layout mediator, which is responsible to attach and link the view pager with the tab layout. So here you can see it takes a tab layout. We can pass the tab layout by using binding.tab layout. The second argument is the view pager. So again, binding.pager. And lastly, it gives you a lambda that passes two things. The first one is the tab, and lastly, the position. And here, you can simply modify the tab attributes, like for example, tab text, tab icon, ID, badge, or whatever. And for the position, it passes the position of the current fragment. So as we've said before, this fragment is the first, so we're gonna have position of zero, this one, position of one, and lastly, the last one, position of two. So now let's change the text of the tab. Tab.text, let's make it, for example, tab, and then pass the position. So we're gonna see tab zero, one, and two. The last step is to call attach once you called the tab layout mediator. And make sure you call attach here after passing an adapter to the view pager. So always call this after passing an adapter to the view pager. Now let's check this out. And here you can see the first tab has zero, tab one, and tab two. Now, if you want to give custom names to each tab, 
can simply do this by checking for the position. So for example, for the first tab, I'm gonna give it home, second tab, profile, and the last tab, details. So here we are gonna add the win to check for the condition, check for the position. And I'm gonna say when the position is zero, then make the text as home. When the position is one, make the text as profile. And lastly, when position is two or anything rather than zero or one, which is else, make it as details. Over here, I did a little mistake. And we are going to run. And here, the first one is having title of home, title profile, and title details. Now, remember when we talked about the create fragment function, that it saves the state as long as the fragment is closer to the viewport or closer to the currently visible fragment. So to verify, we are going to test this very quickly. Here within the first fragment, I'm going to edit this layout to have a text view, edit text, and a button. And whenever we click on that button, we are going to change the text view according to the text entered within that edit text. So here I'm going to create this layout very quickly. So here's the layout of the first fragment. Text view, an edit text, and a button. Now, let's go to the first fragment class to add a functionality to the button. So what we want to do is whenever we click on the button, we want to set the text of the text view to the text within the edit text. So here, btn.setOnClickListener binding.tv.text equal to binding.et.text.toString. And now, let's run. So the first thing, let's type something within the edit text, ASD, ASD, and let's go to any of the other fragments, profile, details, and now let's go back to the home, and you can see here, the edit text still preserve its state. And now if you click on change text, now the text view has changed. If you go to the profile, details, and now let's go back to the home, you can see also the text view also has its state preserved. Now this makes sense because say for example, you have 20 tabs and say that you are currently viewing the 20th tab. So it doesn't make sense that since you are within the 20th tab that you need the information or the UI information that you have within the first tab, for example. That's why the Android operating system kills the fragments that are very far from the viewport or very far from the currently visible fragment to save some memory for the neighbors of the 20th fragment and the 20th fragment itself. Now, if you are wondering how you can share the states between uh, different fragments with the bottom navigation bar that we discussed in the previous video or with the swipeable fragments view that we are currently creating, then I would suggest you to use a shared view model among all these fragments, as it's more concise and easier and will save you a lot of work rather than using any internal fragments APIs. So that was it for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.